Hey guy, every day I get pulled deeper into a social media anger vortex that is surely knocking years off my life and I'm almost positive my inability to sit alone with my thoughts for more than five seconds at a time without pulling out my phone and submitting to an endless scroll is making me dumber, sadder, and more anxious. But the thing is, if I didn't do all that, then I never would have found this guy. <sighs> at a restaurant, while waiting for your food to arrive, your fingers can have a dance party on the table. His name is Nathan Baylett, and he's the best. <laughs> he's slowly been taking over Instagram the past couple of months with his awesome ideas, and they're all so brilliant. But what really sets him apart is the time he gives you to soak it in. An upside down glass can become a little plate. Ah, uh, that's what it looks like up close. I think there should be an award for the weirdest song of the year. And they could call it the Grammy -a Weird. Have a great day. <laughs> A thumb is different than the rest of the fingers. These are just silly thoughts that you can gloss over in a couple of seconds. He's asking the questions that quite frankly, no one else in this country has the guts to. When fish swim, where are they going? Cupboards, wait, what is it? Oh, cupboards are shelves. Cupboards? <laughs> cupboards are just shelves. That's what I'm saying. Every time I'm having a bad day and I go to Nathan's account and just stare into those eyes that have never once blinked, my stress just melts away. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Movies. <laughs> Movies. I will say though, sometimes it's not all just fun and games with him. There have been instances where I've been a little worried. <laughs> you all right, buddy? <laughs> okay. Just making sure. Let's say you're in the future and you have to get on a spaceship to travel to Mars and you can only take one movie with you. What movie would you take to Mars? <laughs> like I'm not really sure what he's laughing about in that one. He didn't say a joke. He just asked a, que a pretty normal question. Oh, wait, he's coming. Hi, Nathan. We love your videos. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Keep scrolling. Okay. I would never say to a guest, please make yourself at home. I don't want people sitting on my couch in their underwear. Out of all his videos, there's really only one that I'm a little bit iffy on. If you could be in a horse costume with a celebrity, which celebrity and would you be the front or the back? Yeah, I would have maybe kept that one in the draft. If you could be nose deep in a celebrity's ass, whose would it be? And would you want it to smell good or bad? Sometimes I wonder, if we had three arms, how would that change lovemaking? Damn, this guy's actually kind of a freak. My friend is a scientist. He studies condom mechanics or something. That's a great joke. I wonder what the comments say. <laughs> That's kind of weird. Uh, what about this one? Come on, everybody. Let's go get those hobbits. Oh, pies. Uh, what kind of pies do you have? Oh, well, I've got blueberry. Three years? 
How old do they think I am? I'd like a pumpkin spice latte, please. <laughs> I have to go to the bathroom. Is that what people think I'm like? Am I just a younger Nathan Bailey? I don't understand. My videos are nothing like his. Why do they call it a freeway if you have to pay a toll to drive on it? What the hell? Anything can be shoes if you put it on your feet. I don't remember making these. <laughs> Is this my entire YouTube channel? Now I know you're thinking, Drew, these TikToks are all so funny and awesome, and thank you for sharing this with me, you've made my day, but you're making a whole video about this? No, I'm making part of a video about this. The rest of this video is about the book that he wrote. You heard that right. Nathan Baylett, Instagram extraordinaire and staring contest champion of the world, is also the author of a rom-com novel. And I figured if this guy is me in a few years, then this is a rare opportunity to get a glimpse into my own future. I need to read this book cover to cover twice. And after several weeks of research, I'm very excited to report that this is the horniest book I've read since Jake Paul's autobiography. I'm not looking for a guy to hang, Chris said. Now I just want to bang. Yeah, Chris cheered as she slipped into her tan ankle boots, ready to jump back into the single scene vagina first. The happiness of my penis is riding on tonight working out with Vanessa. Holy tushy twerks. Holy fuck-a-doodles. You'll take her home in an hour so Mama can get some dick. Now that's what I call a perfect segue to today's sponsor. Hi. Do you like having a chance to win $10,000? Then you're going to love today's sponsor, SoFi, the all-in-one finance app helping you bank, borrow, and invest. Sometimes I like to just bury my head in the sand and hope that I never run out of money, but my accountant keeps telling me that that's extremely irresponsible. So it's great that you can link all your credit card and bank accounts to your SoFi account and see all in one place where all your money's going. Especially helpful is seeing what recurring payments you have coming up, including ones for services you thought you canceled seven months ago. Whoops. SoFi also offers credit score monitoring that not only doesn't hurt your credit score, but will earn you SoFi reward points every time your credit score goes up by five or more points with no added cost. It's a perfect tool to help you hit your financial goals this year. But on top of that, we're also partnering to give away 10 grand to one of you. All you have to do to enter is sign up for SoFi's financial insights or credit score monitoring using my link. And that's it. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code on the screen to enter for a chance to win. Thank you so much to SoFi for sponsoring today's video, which will now continue. Passion or Pancakes is possibly the most complicated book I've ever read, because despite the fact that the entire story takes place in one night, there are approximately 4,000 characters. If there were any more names in this book, he would have had to start inventing new ones. There's even a character whose body parts have their own names, i.e. Stacy the Stomach. But I must have spaced out the first time I read that because I got to a conversation between two people named Chris and Bryn, and out of nowhere it said Stacy growled, and I'm like, who the fuck is Stacy? And why is she so mad? It is almost impossible to keep track of everyone mentioned in this book, but I think I may have come up with a way to help. So the book is about Chris, girl, and Mark, boy, on the fateful night that they meet. Mark is trying to get over his ex, Jill, who left him for Jack, and Chris is trying to get over her ex, David, who left her for Lisa. So she goes out on the town with her best friend, Bryn, while Mark does the same with his best friend, Chet. Hey, can you put your phone down? This is important. After a couple hours, Chris and Bryn meet a girl named Callie, who's described as an insane person, even though she talks in the exact same way as every other character. They eventually meet up with Vanessa, who spends the entire night getting on every everybody's nerves because she won't stop filming. Them. Meanwhile, Mark and Chet meet up with a guy named Skip, who I thought for sure would end up being the love interest of either Callie or Vanessa, but he ends up meeting a girl named Lola at one of the bars they go to on their way to Roger's friend's apartment party. His name is Anton, and he's dating Debbie. Before any of that, though, Mark and Chet meet up with their friends Charles and Vicky, but they leave after two pages to go have sex. So then Mark and Chet go to a bar to get drinks from Bonnie the bartender, whose name is spelled too different ways. There they meet Dina, Lorna, and Anna, who may sound like a band of rambunctious chipmunks, but are actually three human women. Things don't work out with any of them, though, and they also don't work out with a girl named Melanie, because she has a boyfriend. Before leaving the bar, they give their business cards to Miranda and Panda, two different people, but we never hear from either of them ever again. Meanwhile, Chris and Bryn share a two-page interaction of their own with their friends Madeline and Lamar, before chatting it up with Barry the bartender, who they're both attracted to, but he's gay, I think? I don't know. Everybody 
everybody in this book flirts with service workers, but they never pursue them romantically. Instead, they talk to Ron and Ian, who get into a fist fight with each other, forcing them to leave the bar. Luckily, they have somewhere to go because Chris got a text from her friend Holly, who's hanging out with Bob and Steve. Eventually, Vanessa's sister Jane joins the group, along with Sarah and the aforementioned Holly, who's dating Colin, even though nobody likes Colin. The problem with Colin is that he doesn't appreciate Holly as much as he should, but it turns out they actually broke up yesterday and just didn't tell anyone because they didn't want to spoil the mood. The irony, of course, being that news of their breakup would have only improved the mood because Colin sucks. Also, Dan is here. No one knows who Dan is, so. I don't know what he's doing in the group. So that's kind of the main core of the group. But then, for seemingly no reason other than to just make things more complicated for us, Vanessa gets a text from her friend Ruby, who tells her about Hannah, Billy, Chloe, Nick, Layla, and Sarah. Now this is of course a different Sarah than the one we already met, because this Sarah has an H in her name. In fact, someone, and I truly mean someone, because he does not specify who says this in a scene that has 97 people in it, says that they know seven Sarahs. So that makes five additional Sarahs just hanging out in the Nathan Bailet Marina rom-com universe. Then Vanessa, who's clearly very popular, gets a text from Chantel, who updates her about Oscar, Isaac, Leo, Abby, Ezra, and Ellis. And then a text from Shane, who tells her about Camille, Blaine, Tallulah, Blair, Emma, and Blake. Now, if you're worried about having to remember all these names, don't be, because they never get brought up again. Finally, the group makes it to Roger's friend Anton's apartment building for his apartment party, but they never make it past the lobby of the apartment because Roger does something to get everyone mad, so Bryn throws a cocktail in his face, and then the police show up, and then they all go get pancakes, which you may remember from the title. All right, well, that's all of the characters in Passion or Pancakes, but you're probably wondering who ends up with who. And I'm so glad you asked. Mark ends up with Chris, and Skip ends up with Vanessa, and Holly ends up with Chet. Ooh, that's a surprise. And then finally, Bookworm Brenda ends up with Peter the Reader. A perfect match. Except Peter has a girlfriend, so he just fucks off and she ends up all alone. Well, there you have it. Uh, I know it may look like a lot, to remember, but if you ever find yourself reading Passion or Pancakes, which I highly recommend, it's a great book, a uh, great gift. Mother's Day is coming up in a couple months. I know what I'll be getting my mom. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be getting her 12 copies. But if you ever find yourself reading the book and you're at all confused, feel free to open up this video and refer back to this simple chart. You're welcome. I think the only thing this story is missing is a few more downs to go with all the ups. Everything kind of just works out for everyone. There's a part where they all go to karaoke and they're a little nervous to sing, but then they sing so well that a recording of it goes viral. That's awesome. I also like that Mark's character is written to be the most perfect human man ever constructed. He is tall. He's hot. He's smart. He's funny. He's rich. He has big feet. And every woman wants to fuck him. But Mark doesn't want to fuck. He wants to love. He wants passion, not pancakes. Or maybe the other way around. I can't remember which is which. Really, the only conflict in the story is that Chris just wants to rip his clothes off and hook up with him on the spot, but Mark wants to get to know her first. Chris paused and looked over his poundable chest, up to his thick, grippable hair, kissable, chiseled chin, and his starry eyes looking at her so nicely that she felt the warmest whoosh tingle up thoughts of exactly how she'd climb him. So I'd have to have a relationship with you to climb your mountain and sit on your peak? Mark chuckled. I'm afraid so. Eventually, he wins this battle. They decide to take it slow because they're a perfect match and they don't want to mess this up. This all culminates in what I think is, and I know this is going to sound hyperbolic, the single most beautiful paragraph in the history of the written word. And their fun rhythm moved them close, then apart, then back together, and over here, and over there, rockin' and swaying, to a twirl, to a deep, delicious dip, and so erotically slow, <laughs> back up into his strong, gentle arms, for a sexy sway, with a sultry stare, then starry-eyed stare, then a sweet, simple, and super sincere stare, as they slowed, and slowed, and slowed, to a sway, together, a soft, slow, fun sway, just the two of them, on the rooftop, above the world, 
up in heaven, surrounded by city lights and flowers and stars and the moon and a beautiful bright green baseball field below, and everything felt wonderful, and he felt wonderful, and she felt wonderful being with him and all of this wonderful, and wow, their wonderful was a wonderful, more wonderful than drunk dancing with some random dude and pulling him home for a half hour of woo-hoo. That was all one sentence. Really, these two people could not have asked for a better night out. Not only do they find their soulmate after looking for a few hours, but they manage to convert each of their best friends into the person they've wanted them to be their entire lives. So Chet is like a Barney Stinson type, right? He's constantly running into women he's slept with. He's telling Mark, don't worry about the future. Tonight, we're just gonna s**k and f**k till our d**ks fall off. It's about love. It's about sex, Chet said. The lyrics are saying monogamy. The beat is saying sex. That is until the end where he's like, actually, I've changed my ways. I like Holly and I'm a relationship guy now. Also, Brain breaks the sad news pretty early on to Chris that she's planning on moving to Los Angeles to pursue the next chapter of her life. But at the end of the book, she says, you know what? Never mind. Screw my career. Screw all of my plans. I'm staying here with my family. Aww. And that's so sweet, really. But. I'm doing the math over here like, you guys have been to at least 12 bars tonight. There's no way you're in any cognitive state to be making these kinds of life-altering decisions right now. But that's the thing. Despite the dilemma it poses in its title, Passion or Pancakes isn't about having to make difficult decisions. It's about everything working out perfectly for a group of hot, drunk people. And honestly, that's the kind of story this world needs more of. So Nathan, Thank you. And I'm sorry I had a full-blown existential crisis earlier when I saw three comments comparing us. I, I thought about it a lot, and I'm honored to be associated with someone who spreads as much joy as you do. In fact, I think I have a video to make. Fingers are kind of like the toes of your hands. <laughs>